And now, your host, Couch Tomato! Hey, I'm Couch Tomato and I'm joined by... Hulk. Welcome to Stuff for Movie Buffs. And today, we're talking... Deadpool 2. All right, let's get into it. The long-awaited sequel. All right, actually, before we get into all that, uh, if you haven't already, uh, make sure to support the show by checking out our Patreon. Uh, once you do that, you're actually able to sign into our private uh, group chat and discuss movies, movie trailers, movie reviews, and anything related to pop culture or anything that a movie buff would like. So uh, anxious to hear your opinions, head over to our uh, Patreon page and uh, support. So uh, let's get into it, man. First things first, when this movie came out, the first one, it set a lot of February records that stood until, you know, Black Panther took all of those <laughs> yeah. down. So um, obviously this thing is on pace mm-hmm. to do it again. I wanted to get some box office predictions from you. Oh, it, oh, I think it's it might hit like 145, I would say. Uh, you stole my <laughs> notes. I got 143. But um, it, it, just a couple of factors, because I think the last one, do you remember what the last one did? I forgot. I think it was like 120 something because I know it beat Spider-Man. I know it beat like some of the other classics. And then I'm pretty, it could have been like 120 something. It sounds about right. I was about to say 170. So I was definitely off. Was it a, did it come out on a four day weekend? It was a holiday week. Was it? I think was it, was, it, uh, it was a president's day, right? Something or Valentine's day. That's the reason that 170 got into my head, but I don't remember whatever. It broke a lot of records. They even make a joke in this movie about it being number two, the passion of Christ. Yeah. A couple of things that make it difficult. Cause when the um, Thursday night before um, Thursday night even hit, this thing was projected to hit 130 to 150, which is a huge range. Yeah. But um, just a couple of factors uh, uh, excuse me, a couple of factors that affect it. It still has to go up against Avengers Infinity War. And although that's on like a decline, a lot of people still haven't seen that movie yet. A lot, a lot. Yeah. And also it, it is rated R and a lot of folks might not be in the mood for a rated R action movie considering the events that just happened yesterday. There was another high school shooting. So yeah. me personally, when it comes to rated R comic book movies or I'm personally scared to go into the theaters for that, even with some PG-13 ones. Because ever since that, the, um, what was it? The Dark Knight Rises um, game? No, yeah. like, I, I, I'm i actually low-key scared of that stuff. I always sit by an exit. I always, I can't have people sitting behind me. So I go to the top row. So I'm one of those people. And then the other thing is, a lot of people who wouldn't have saw Avengers, they because of the word of mouth, like everybody was like doing memes and stuff about it on social media. Mm -hmm. It kind of persuaded some folks to go out on a Sunday or Saturday to go see the movie. This one, I looked on my newsfeed and I'm seeing more Royal wedding um, posts versus Deadpool. Like a lot of people are talking about Deadpool, but I think it's getting drowned out by the Royal. Yeah, It's mostly like, like fans, like, like us who, you know, follow the franchise. Yeah, so it, it, it's not it, it's going to be the hardcore folks. It's not necessarily going to be the fair weather guys, like you said. So let's jump into it and talk about some likes and dislikes. I mean, if you can't if you don't have anything nice to say, I'm messing up that phrase. What is it? If you don't have anything, don't say something mean unless you have whatever. Let's just talk about <laughs> good stuff. You know what I'm talking Couch, about? You slipping? <laughs> I, don't, I, I forgot what the phrase is. I've always struggled with that phrase anyway. Like even when I used to say it on the show, I'm but pretty sure I was ca- messing that's it you up. Though. That's your catchphrase. It ain't me. I didn't make that up. It's <laughs> you know because I always say something like, "Mama used to say if you don't don't say nothing at all if it's not nice." That doesn't sound right either. <laughs> but uh, say something nice, and then we'll start saying some bad stuff. But um, so haven't talked to you yet. Anxious to hear what yeah. you thought about the movie. Let me hear some likes from you. I got really like this movie overall. Like, um, right from the jump, like the opening credits, like I thought that was hilarious. Them doing a spoof with uh James Bond. Um, I also like the premise of just them building his character in a way. Like they really went in depth with, like, okay, we're gonna develop this character. We're gonna show you him, you know, potentially commit trying to commit suicide, really wanting to die, and then you know throughout the whole movie, you kind of feel bad for him. You know, spoiler alert. I, we can't do spoilers, right? Just say spoiler alert, I guess. You just said it. I was actually <laughs> going right. to try to stay away from it. Nah, you know what? Spoil away. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. With his girl dying, 
I, I kind of knew that was going to happen just with the way the franchise was trying to head with him with, you know, with X-Force and all that stuff. And I, I didn't think they would have him be tied down. So I wasn't surprised when they killed off her character. Did you see the after credit scenes? I mean, the mid credit scenes? No, with him reversing everything, but I think this, I think Cable's gonna get mad. I think they're gonna fix that somehow. Like, no, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're bringing her back. Like, you think I, so? I, 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 like soon as Cable was involved I, from the gate when she when she bit the dust, yeah. I like I kept thinking, oh, she, they're gonna bring her back. And then when Cable said he only had enough charges for two, yeah, I thought Cable was just gonna go back and um um fix that whole situation. But nah, I think it was kind of. I think they want that character to stay around. I'm pretty sure they they'll let her stay around. Yeah, but um, but yeah, but yeah, like I, I just liked how they use that as a catalyst for like his emotional state throughout the whole movie, and like I just really thought that was smart. And I don't know, I just really enjoyed that whole part. They did a better job than the Wolverine thing because him and uh, like that's the same thing they try to do on the Wolverine, the one that nobody like. <laughs> That people tried to like when it first came out, and now they could admit it wasn't a good. Which the second one? After Origins and before Logan. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah the second one. Because yeah. you know he had Wolverine is just part of different franchises, so it gets confusing. <laughs> but um, that they tried to do that, like a warrior that was looking for like an honorable death. Yeah. And um, even though this wasn't honorable, but I'm like, all right, yeah, that's he's trying to commit suicide. I like how they put that. It's they did a way better job than what was going on with uh, uh, Logan and the Wolverine. So the pop culture references, like these, these are my likes. I agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. Pop culture references are always going to be a plus. Um, Mid credit scenes were funny. And I do think that you could take at least one of them serious. That's why I, I know for a fact that she's, get, she's bought back. <laughs> and then also, correct me if I'm wrong, with Domino. Yeah. Was, did they give her vitiligo to explain how her eye was like that? They did not. I don't really think they went in too much in depth because it was just like, they just told you that she's lucky for the most part and that was it. They didn't really like... No, I'm talking about that thing on her eye because in the comic, mm-hmm. it's just she just got a that black thing on her eye. But I'm... I, they, I felt like the way they explained it was like before she put on her gloves while she was in the plane, I yeah. saw discolorations on her arm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, they probably gave her a uh, vitiligo or something, which which is cool. But um, I'm not sure. Whatever. She was just pretty awesome to me. Um, she walks funny and she runs awkward. Yeah, I, I, lo- still, like, I loved her. Even from like like Atlanta, like I, I just love her as an actress. Same here. Yeah. So when, as soon here. as they picked that's, her, that's, like I was already on board. Nah, that was tight. She was tight work. Um, I mean, this movie, I felt like it's, it's good. It's solid. How did you... Now, you said um, we're going to get into this later mm-hmm. um, about the first one versus the last one. I will say that the first one I thought was good. A lot of people treated it like it was the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> but Deadpool is kind of like a Tony Stark to me to where you enjoy the character more than the movie he's in. So that's kind of how I felt about part one. I enjoyed Deadpool, the character, more so than the movie. And I feel like that about this as well. And let me get to some of my dislikes now. Mm. You ready? Yep. All right, so I like the fact that these movies are doing well from a monetary perspective, right? So it proves that you don't have to spend like $300 million every time at bat to make a good comic book movie. So I appreciate the fact that these movies, it feels, it never feels like they're saving the world. It always seems like they're saving like a street corner. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but I like even that, if, I like that. And, <laughs> me too. It's like sometimes, bro, you don't need to be saving the universe all the time. And I appreciate that small storyline. So that's more of a like, but I, I thought Deadpool was good. Like I said, I felt like the first one, Deadpool was good, but a lot of the stuff that was happening, it had a horrible villain in the first one. And this one, I th- who is the villain, really? Because it's not Cable, and it's definitely not Juggernaut if you allow the henchmen to take care of him. <laughs> and it, you can't even say that it's the little boy. So this movie technically doesn't even have a villain, or at least a worthy opponent. So that that's a little sour grape there. But um, also... Somebody brought this up in my private chat, but they mentioned that the movie was good. However, it's probably not going to be rewatchable because the jokes won't land a second time around. I definitely agree with that. I felt like um, there's so much pop culture references. I'm like, when you hear a pop culture reference joke twice, it's never funny or it's rarely funny. So watching this a second time, it's probably going to age quicker than the first one. 
But once again, I mean, these it, it, it's it's still solid. I mean, X Force. Did you see what they did with this trailer? I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. No, back like to they the really presented X Force like they were going to be that deal. I thought that was. Oh, funny. okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, but I was surprised when they wiped all of them out and then In like seconds. Yeah. Did you see that cameo? Oh, I I didn't pick it up at first. It wasn't until after, and I was just like, "What? That was Brad Pitt?" Like I had no Brad, idea. I thought that was just like, I, well, I saw it in XL. That's why I don't know if it just jumped at ah jumped. No, nah, I just saw it in standard. Nah, man. I, I was like, is that Brad Pitt with a skinny body? Because it looked like they just <laughs> CGI'd his face yeah, onto somebody was- else's body. And I'm like, is that Brad Pitt? And I was so confident in it. But then before I came on the show, I'm like, hold on, let me confirm that was Brad Pitt before I say something dumb on the podcast. And then, a, you know, somebody <laughs> comment and tell me I'm dumb. So I was like, oh, but when I looked it, it, and verified it, it was definitely him. So I thought that was hilarious. But the way the trailer positioned itself and the jokes they used in the trailer, how they kept making you think this was going to be a cliche by the numbers uh, sequel. And they were because that's how Deadpool was talking. It's like he knows he's in a movie. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, they're really going after that sequel money now. Uh, You know, they're positioning. Oh, they're going to start doing what DC doing, but they're going to make it way more funnier. I'm 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 in. And when they killed them, killed them off, to me, that was like the funniest joke. I'm like, ha, they tricked y'all with the trailer. I loved it. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, like even like with, um, with uh, I guess, t- Bedlam, Terry Crews character. Like I thought for sure he was going to have like, you know what I'm saying, some at least more lines and they just wiped them off too. I was like, whoa. I don't dude. know. Like that's, I was worried because he's typically a henchman. Like he, yeah. you saw the longest yard. Like you rarely get, like other than everybody hates Chris. You're not giving Terry Crews a lot of lines. And that's why I was like, this the guy y'all building y'all franchise around? I guess. But um, I'm trying to give dislikes. But this movie is actually pretty solid. Now I'm thinking about it. But um, cause I'm looking <laughs> at my dislikes and they're compliments. I thought the jokes about about Domino being um, lucky were hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I put nothing but likes in my dislikes section. Yeah, I'm looking <laughs> at my notes. I put in credit scenes were hilarious. Do You, you saw both of the mid credit scenes, right? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Like, with the Green nah, Lantern I, I, and all that stuff, like the the uh, callback to uh, Origins, yeah, yeah, and I thought that was stuff was hilarious. Here's my main dislike: like when I mentioned the villain part, that little kid was getting on my nerves. I actually didn't mind if Cable like landed that gunshot the second time around. <laughs> yeah, it's like he, he was it's funny like, to I, you. No, no, no. I no, I agree. Like I felt like um, I, I couldn't sympathize with the kid. It wasn't like um. Like with Logan, for for example, where you felt bad for the kid, like you understood why why Hugh Jackson's character had to try to save her, or you know, what I'm saying like any other movie, like where the kid is likable. With this one, it was like I was like I was with you on it. I was just like, go ahead and kill him. You know, what I'm saying to me, the yeah. only reason why Deadpool didn't allow him to die was because of his girl telling him not yeah. to. You know, what I'm saying, but there was nothing else within the story itself where it's just like you could feel where you could sympathize with this kid because he was just wilding. And not only that, he sounds like a, I don't know, like, I, I don't like when people do that. Like when they, I don't know the right word for it. When you, the whole Ice Cube Tupac thing, because they, they kept picking that Black Todd or Black Tom <laughs> about being a culture vulture, <laughs> where it was just like, dude, I, I just, just talk regular, man. Like, and when he was using his powers, whenever he used his powers, it just sounds so fake. Like, I'm just like, oh my goodness, how did y'all let this part get past editing? But yeah, so I, I hated it. I don't want to say hated because it was some heartfelt moments where I'm like, yeah, just act like that. Like, d- just act regular, dude. I don't like when you yeah. try to act like a rapper or a gangster. Like, it just it doesn't work with me. And then, um, yeah, so that was probably my only dislike. So here's the big question, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people want to know, and I think you've hinted at it already. Is this better than Deadpool Part 1? For me, yes. Like, I went, I walked out of the theater like even more like okay like I really feel like they know what they're doing and it's so meta with like their jokes like they just like to me this was such a well done sequel and I, I mean I'm like you with the camp as far as like the first Deadpool I liked it but I wasn't I didn't love it as much as other people so for me like it didn't have to do much to overcome that and if, and to me like they hit all the things that they needed to do and like you said some of the jokes won't stand the test of time but others will like I still like the Brown Panther joke like some of these like I guess like some of the pop culture pop culture references like I'll still find funny later on maybe the cameo won't be as surprising 
But at the same time, like, I really feel like Ryan Reynolds, the whole team behind it, like, they know what they're doing with this character. So I felt like it was better than the first one. Are we sure that this takes place present day? With Fox? That timeline all messed up. Did you notice that the eight, the eighties uh, Professor X was in there? Uh, for real, yeah. But I think, but I think that's, the, I think that's the point. You know what I'm saying? Like I think, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I, I thought that was hilarious. yeah, because because even him, he'll be like. Um, Cerebro, it smells like Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, he'll go back in time to X Men or, you know what I'm saying? Like, they know, like, the timeline is all jacked up. So it's just like, we'll throw Wolverine's death in there, even though that's in the future. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we'll still use the 80s X Men. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, like, the current team right now. So. Like I don't, I don't mind. And here's it like my that. thing. I think, I think the the best part of part one was surprisingly the romance, and I, yes. I don't think it's a mistake that they chose to release that in February. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they presented it as like a, a Valentine's Day movie. Um, I think the chemistry between Wilson and uh, his old lady is basically it. It puts them as the best on like live action superhero comic book movie couple ever i don't know if there's a stronger couple like can you name one that's a that's pretty you might be right because i'm thinking At, like every every comic book hero couple there people usually hate the woman or they hate the man yeah i think you could probably put uh gwen, gwen uh stacy and yeah and, um that could have been but the problem is it's like the franchise the is movie over. was so bad yeah the movie and the movie was so bad so yeah so it, it um i think but and I don't think nobody's gonna remember it because the movie's so bad. But especially since Deadpool broke all those records, I, I'm just thinking about everybody else. Like nobody likes Cyclops. Cyclops when people like the original Jean Grey. Nobody liked. Um, I'm thinking, did Logan ever get uh, boot up with anybody that was worthy? Nope. Nah. So I'm uh, and and um, people don't like Pepper. Nah. All right. I'm just waiting for you to second me on that. I'm just like, nah, not, I I'm agree. the only one that don't I like think Pepper. You're right. Cause DC, they didn't really like um, Maggie Gyllenhaal all that much. They definitely didn't like Katie Holmes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, but um. So you're right. So I, I mean, yeah. Um, so I, I think this is the best we, one. It's the best on screen couple. Now here's the thing. I like their relationship on this. She's dead most of the time, but I think their chemistry on part one, they had just a lot more to play with. Yeah. If you um, so I thought part two was a little bit more tame. Did I imagine this? But this movie's rated R. On part one, when a when a knife was about to get stabbed into a dome or a, a torso, it showed it. Like it felt like they kept cutting away on this film. Like other than the first couple of action sequences when he was going on that montage of killing the people in Japan when he said he was going international yeah. or worldwide, whatever he said, and he was on like a killing sp- uh, frenzy. Outside of that when um people were fighting head up every time it was about to show you a gruesome scene it cut away did i imagine that i agree a little bit like um i think they were more brutal with like when he broke his bones and stuff but even then i think i think you might be right they were i think more part, brutal one on part one with a little that. bit remember it showed you yeah they were more graph yeah they were more graphic with part one yeah, so I'm just like, if you got the rated R tag, use it. Cause you you're not you're not gonna make 14, 15, 16, 17 year old money. I mean, was well, 16 year old money. Yeah. It's like those kids would if they get into the theater, they sneaking in there. Or their parents buying them tickets. So it's like, no, yep. once we're in the theater, you're presenting yourself to adults, get gruesome. It's just a lot of stuff that it was able to show that I'm like, why did they cut away? on that spot like I, I just didn't understand it so just for so that so I'm bringing up the romance I'm bringing up the gore um I think you gotta put part one ahead of this in my opinion the romance I can't compete with but the other aspects of it I, I just felt like I don't know I, I just I, I felt like I just enjoyed this one more like just from like my gut reaction the cameos the references but it's, but it's. I feel you, but then I, I feel you, but I also say there, there's some um, forgettable moments in part one, but there's also some forgettable moments in this one. The thing I'm trying to say is the amount of time it took you to forget the stuff in part one will be longer than the amount of time that it takes you to forget the stuff in part two. You understand what I mean by that? Now elaborate. 
basically, I feel like we may be prisoners of the moment, but I think if you ask us six months from now how we feel about this movie, your hype is going to be less hype than how you felt about part one. I felt like people were talking about Deadpool came out in February. Yeah. Uh, in 2016. People were talking about that stuff that following January. I feel like this come, and it's not really a huge blockbuster uh, summer, but come August, I think people are going to have their mind focused elsewhere. And I think it came out so close to Avengers Infinity War that a lot of people are going to crown that the best comic book movie of the year. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, for, it it's not even going to be a competition. No, nah, it's not. The Infinity and War. I, I think what, go, well, let's talk about that. Best comic book movie of 2018. I just kind of sat minds. Yeah. Now I'm in the same campus. What do you have as number one? I have, I still have Infinity War number one. Number two. Black Panther number Black Panther number two and then Deadpool. Deadpool was probably the second. Some people will argue the first best comic book movie of the year it came out. Yeah, yeah, it was better than. Now looking back on it, it's better than Civil War and um, Batman versus Superman. Yeah, Marvel. and I didn't like Civil War when it first came out anyway. So, um, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I be saying. I'm like some people thinking present. I'm thinking long term. You're not going to remember this movie four months from now. So that, and that's that. That was my thing about uh, Civil War. I'm like, wow. Like I usually want to repeat and watch this. Like I kind of, I kind of could wait for the Blu-ray on Civil War. And that thing been on Netflix sitting there. And I'm telling a lot of people that was mad at me. I'm like, I told you so. I told you so. Like the movie not that good. Like yeah. I don't really enjoy heroes fighting themselves. I like them to have some big foe. And that's the problem with this film too. It's like when you watch it again, you're going to realize a lot of people died in that movie. He had to go rewind time because a lot of people were dying for no reason. I'm like, <laughs> there's not really a menace in this movie. Like people are willingly trying to kill themselves, including <laughs> Deadpool. He's literally trying to commit suicide. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's trying to kill you but yourself. So that's, um, but I agree with you. I put um, Avengers Infinity War 1, Black Panther number 2, and um, off of the villain alone, and then uh, Deadpool number 3. Let's see if uh, we still feel the same, because we got a couple more comic book movies coming out. Um, but it's not, nah, looking this, at you, DC, this, I doubt it's going to be, because Black Panther. It, but then you also have Phoenix also, and I don't, it's I not, don't like what they're doing. Nope. <laughs> and that's the thing, too. And to me, it's like Black Panther and Infinity War are already classics. So it's like, I doubt that the top two are going to change. Maybe part the third spot, but not right now. It's like, let me, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask, does S X force deserve a franchise, right? For sure. Yeah. And look at, look at what you just said, because a couple of things, I want you to think about these moving parts. Like keep in mind, Fox is trying to sell their catalog. Disney tried to buy their catalog. Wait, is it? And then who's so it's official though. I don't know if it's official. I think somebody else tried to outbid them like just this last week. Like I'm looking at it, it's it's official. Like they bought it. Yeah, but what's your source? Is it BB what, what Wikipedia page are you on? <laughs> BBC, BBC.com is Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> but um even better. Marvel has yeah. it. And you know Marvel's gonna try to reboot that baby. Because I don't think you could squeeze money out of the um X-Men franchise anymore. If you look at the last nah, couple it has of numbers. To be I think Logan. No, nah, it has to be rebooted. Yeah, I, I think I don't even think you could squeeze money out of Logan like that anymore. Like it's like we making the same amount of money from these movies as we are. Like why are we casting J Law and these you know high profile actors in these films? We might as well just reboot this baby yeah. and start making a billion per X Men movie with Marvel Studios. Keeping that in mind, is it worth? Is it even worth it to have an X Force uh, franchise? I think so, cause with that, cause they're they're but basically they're already gonna do it anyway. But at the same time, with Deadpool, like I feel like there's so much, there's only so much you can do like with standalones and solo movies. So it's like, why not put them with these characters or different characters, interchangeable characters, and allow that creative team like continue to flourish because I really feel like they've done a decent job with the first two so it's like if they want to team up and do something else like with their creative brain I feel like they've earned that right to continue on especially with the box office numbers you know what I'm saying and mm -hmm. with the site not to Disney don't care yeah, about that yeah so with the site not to be named like they're, they're doing pretty decent with the audience and the critics plus the money that's coming in 
it's like why not like just give them a chance to see what they can do with x-force if it flops it flops if it doesn't you have a you have a franchise that you could build off of so so I, I i agree with you i think they deserve a franchise but this is what i think they're going to do i think fox mm. is since disney owns if according to you Dis- that deal is done and disney's acquired all those properties yep. What they'll probably do is a re- like they'll probably bring in like a Fantastic Four in Phase Four, and then in Phase Five later on down the road they'll reboot X Men. Even if they do that, I think Deadpool probably isn't going to get rebooted. I think that's going to be part of the joke. Like it's like yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like although we're we're sticking with the old, um, we're in the old universe or something. Like I think that uh, franchise will be able to survive. And I don't think X Force is going to. Um, they're not going to get their own standalone movies, but Deadpool three, four, and five, or however long they want to keep this going, it'll basically be ensemble films similar to this, yeah. where it's a Deadpool sequel, including X Force. Yeah, because that's that's basically the conversation they had with um with Reynolds. They were just like um going forward is going to be X-Force. It's not going to be like a standalone movie. Like the next movie will be like an X-Force movie where Deadpool will be the central character, obviously, Mm -hmm. but it will be an ensemble where he's with the team. So that makes sense. And then um, a couple things before we move on. Wow. Is that easy to quit X-Men? Like you don't have to sign no exit interviews or anything like that. (laughs) Colossus just left him, no, but to me, that him was, dirty. <laughs> no, to me that was just that was just funny because like they, in some way they had to know like okay Deadpool is not X Men X Men material. Yeah. So just the fact that he, they had him with the trainee shirt and all that stuff walking around like it didn't surprise me when he was just like yo get off the I'm team. I'm getting that jersey. Like, that jersey much. actually looked tight. Um, <laughs> but uh, another thing was I knew Juggernaut was in that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, like, even but when they said, I said, the only person they could bring back is Juggernaut. Like, that's that big? It has to be Juggernaut in there. But I'm, I'm just like, maybe, maybe not. And I'm just like, when it, sh- when it happened, cool. And then when Domino made that face, when she saw Juggernaut get released, I thought they used to date or something. But I was totally <laughs> wrong on that. So I was predicting everything right except that. But nonetheless, solid film. It sounded like we both liked it, even though I thought... I thought my notes were way more harsh, but after reading them, I'm like, no, I gave this movie a lot of compliments. Tight work. So um anxious to hear what you guys think. Do you guys think X Force deserves a franchise? Um, let us know. Also, let us know, is Deadpool 1 better than Deadpool 2? Or are we imagining things? Because me and Hulk were on two different pages. So uh guys, it's about that time. I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Before you leave, if you like what you heard, share it with a friend on Apple Podcasts or wherever you go for your podcast. Don't let this be the last time we hear from you or you hear from us. Uh, Support the show and become a sponsor by visiting our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Couch Tomato Films. Also, join us next week and check out the show notes on where to find us weekly. It's Couch Tomato Films on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, and Couch Tomato Film on Twitter. Other than that, peace.